So today I get to to itch my envy of uh, Makita battery platform uh, owners around the world. Um, this is something that that uh, I've seen and I, I kind of want it. Uh, disclosure: uh, This is uh, Melif. I always want to say MILF, um, the company I did the uh, little review on for the soldering iron. They saw that video and they said, hey, we make other stuff. Let me send you uh, some stuff for you to check out. Uh, just so you know, my, my rule with that is, is one, it's got to be something you guys would be interested in. Two, something I would use. Three, uh, you, you don't get a video because you sent me something. If it stinks, I won't make a video, but if it's good, I will make a video. And um, yeah. There's no money exchanged. They just sent me this stuff and told me to take a look at it. So, uh, spoiler alert, if you're watching this, I, I, I probably at least think the stuff that I'm looking at is worth buying. Disclosure aside. Uh, so, anyway, yeah, this is the first thing I got, which is the coffee maker. Um, Millif. 20 volt coffee maker. I think we could do better than that. There you go. Um, yeah, and uh, like I said, ever since I saw the Makita one, I was like, man, I'd kind of like that. For me, you know, you get a nice, nice cold winter day. I've been working in the cold all day after lunch and then getting ready to close out the day. I'd kind of like a hot cup of coffee for the ride home. And um, yeah, that's where this comes in. And I didn't even know that this thing was uh, was a thing until they uh, they uh, showed me their catalog there. So um, yeah, this... Uh, this guy right here, we'll get into the specs of it, and then we'll then we'll test it out. Um, I, I pretty much did a whole bunch of testing beforehand, because like I said, if it's not good, I'm not going to make a video, and I didn't want to waste my time. Uh, basically, what you're getting with this is it's a 3 minute and 30 second cycle time, as far as um, when you first turn it on, you hit the button, and then the coffee comes squirting out. It makes 6 ounces of coffee, um, which is, I got notes over here, so I'm not avoiding eye contact. I'm reading my notes occasionally. Uh, yeah, it makes six ounces of coffee per cycle, so you're looking at probably around seven minutes to get what I would consider a cup of coffee, which is 12 ounces. Uh, on a six milliamp hour DeWalt battery, the uh, XR, I got one around here somewhere. This guy, you will get uh, five cups from, from this battery. Well, five and a half, which leads me to it actually does have battery protection. Um, I just kept running cycles through it. And like with any coffee maker, you want to run a few uh, dry cycles through it just to get any gunk that might be stuck into the system. So I was just running it and testing it at the same time. And uh, yeah, uh, the five five cycles or five cups, I should say, uh, it, it, it ran fine for. And um, the six one had shut off halfway through because it thought the battery was getting dead. And when I looked at the battery, uh, I had one bar. So that seems seems about fair. Um, what else we get? Uh, coffee comes out at 187 degrees uh, Fahrenheit. Uh, we are looking at uh, 20 volts. 300 watts and my math tells me that's about 15 amps so we're chooching pretty hard on that and anything battery related where you have an inductive load uh, really really sucks the juice out of your batteries so uh, keep that in mind and uh, I think that's about it as far as that stuff goes so let me um, swing it around and we'll run a cycle or two through this and time it and make an actual cup of coffee so far I've only ran water through it so we'll see how the actual coffee tastes coming out of it. And uh, I, I did forget to mention, um, it's got your standard K-cup style uh, coffee maker or coffee pod. And it comes with this little cup here, which is kind of a, a token thing. I mean, it's small, it's not not insulated. I mean, it's, it is what it is. And you got the filter style k-cup jobby so if you want to save money on uh, coffee and not spending what quarter per k-cup I think is what they're going for you could fill this up with just regular bag coffee run it through I'm just gonna run the k-cups just for for ease because this is gonna live in my truck and I don't want to have all kinds of crap floating around it so uh, yeah let's spin some cameras around and we'll uh, run this guy through through the ringer all right well I did a little pre-gaming here and uh, got everything set up kind of the best I could do with the, the angles I'm working with here. 
But um, yeah, so basically, I mean, I already showed you where the cake cups go in. You just pop them in there, slap the guy in there. Why don't we do that right now? And uh, yeah, take that cake cup pod, stick it in there, put it in, slap it down. And in the back here is where the water reservoir is. It holds 14 ounces, I think is what it says. Like I said, you get 6 ounces out of a cycle, so put 14 in there, you're going to have a little left over for if you're making a 12 ounce cup like I would do. And the 6 amp hour DeWalt battery here. And I stick that guy on there. And up here the power button turns red. I don't know if you'll be able to see that. But you just turn that, and that turns it on. And it turns blue when it's on. Let me see if I can give you, give you a better angle of that. There you go. And set you back down. And we got a timer here. So I think all you need to do. Oh, before we get into that whole mess, let's see what actually fits in this thing. Now, for me, this is my at home. Don't want my coffee to get cold too fast cup, and that just kind of fits in there nicely the way it is. And I think you pull this guy off here, and this is kind of your standard style travel mug. I guess we're talking about six and three quarter inches, seven probably with the lid on it, and that will fit in there. You just kind of got to angle it up so you can clear the little a little nub down here, kind of like so. But for today, we'll use this smaller one because I'm home and that's what I'm going to be drinking out of. And we'll push these two buttons and uh, watch your chutes there. Uh, this is, like I said earlier, 3 minutes 30 seconds seems to be the amount of time it takes to run a cycle on this thing. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, again, you got to manage expectations. It beeps while it's running, so you know. I mean, I think if that was in my house, that would get on my nerves. But the fact that it's sitting in the back of my truck kind of works out better for me. That way, there I know when it's done. But I mean, like I said, you got to manage expectations compared to like a Keurig machine. You're talking 110 volts, 15 available amps, compared to 20 volts and however many amps this thing's putting out. I think probably figuring close to 15. Don't need that there anymore. Alright, looks like it stopped uh, bubbling, I guess would be a good description for it. Got ourselves about a half a cup of coffee there. So, um, we got enough. Let me check the water. Water looks good for another another cycle, so let's run it through another cycle just for uh, shits and giggles there. Plus, I kind of want a cup of coffee, so get those guys going. Again, with the beeping, we'll run it through. All right, that seems like a full cycle to me. Uh, I got a little meat thermometer here. We can check the temperature. There we go. Stick that guy in there. And we're talking 178, 180. 180 degree cup of coffee in uh, science measurements 30 76 degrees C 81 all right well that's a high cup of hot cup of coffee uh, as you can see as far as volume goes that might be a little short of 12 ounces 
it's enough coffee for me and that's the problem with these percolator style uh, coffee makers as compared to the Keurigs uh, the Keurigs have the pumps to meter everything so you get the exact amount with these you get a little more you get a little bit less but um yeah I mean that would keep me happy on a cold day so now getting into the second item they actually sent me three items now that I'm I'm thinking about it. Uh, we're only going to do two today, and the other one is just a small thing. We'll we'll do that in like a a quickie tool review if it if it uh, deems itself worthy. But um, yeah. So the second item that that we're looking at today is their mini car refrigerator. I guess you would call it. Um, this particular one, I didn't even ask for it. They just sent it. I, I got a shipping. Um, uh, notification saying that a refrigerator was coming so I was assuming it would be like uh, you've seen the little mini coolers I think they got like Peltier uh, modules in them you plug them in and they just kind of keep things cool and then this, this big thing showed up and um, I, I didn't even know they made this I didn't see it in their catalog and I'm kind of kind of happy they sent it I mean I don't know if I would have been so bold to ask for it, but they sent it anyway. Um, yeah, so this is just um, very similar to the Makita refrigerator. And um, yeah, it's got a little teeny compressor in the thing. You can't see the vents for it down there. It takes um, two 20 volt DeWalt batteries. We'll get a better look inside there. And it's got itself a little cooling cooling compartment in there we'll get into the specs of the thing uh, I'm reading through the manual and um, I think this might be an older manual that I that I got with this so some of the stuff doesn't jive as far as as far as numbers go but I mean the good news is is it jives on the better end of things as far as stuff goes so this is a 12 to 24 volt uh, cooler um, they're saying 60 watts from from my math what I'm looking at it's probably closer to 30 watts which is better uh, at 20 volts this runs at 2.5 amps 20 volts of course being your DeWalt battery uh, sound wise it is 45 DB uh, when I was testing it earlier it, you, you barely hear the thing running uh, which is kind of cool uh, capacity 24 liters or 0.84 cubic feet which is from best I could tell maybe two six packs of bottles a little two six packs of cans with some with some lunch involved I'm thinking as far as the capacity goes uh, weight one sorry 11.8 kilograms 26 uh, pounds and that's empty without anything in it of course uh, it has a 5 volt 1 amp uh, USB for charging your devices uh, of, of what and what not um, what are we looking at here uh, 14.5 volts oh the stuff that comes with it where did I put that I'll be right back I'm back um, Basically, you get the thing here, and you get an AC power supply, which is rated for 14.4 volts at 6 amps, which is basic uh, uh, output of your alternator of your car while it's running. You get a cigarette lighter or power adapter. I don't know if they still call them cigarette lighters. I know they don't put cigarette lighters in cars anymore. But you get your basic uh, power adapter 12 volt with the plug that would go into the side. And uh, we'll look at that a little bit later. And you get uh, the manual. And the manual's pretty good. It, it goes through everything you, you need to know to get, to, to get the thing to work. I will say that in the manual, they do not, like I said, I think it's an older manual, so it's, it's not, not the, the latest uh, information on this thing. The manual does not talk about the app that's available with this. Um, it has an app that is called... Let me look it up real quick. I'll drop a picture, a screenshot in it. It is the Car Fridge Freezer um, app. You get that on uh, iOS or, or Android. And um, if you are going to use it, I'd recommend the app. The app only uses Bluetooth. It's and Apple's pretty good at telling you, telling you what, what these uh, apps want to want to 
get your information out of and it just asks permission to use Bluetooth so it's not asking for your locations and all that other crap that some of these apps need to have access to your pictures. I had an air filter and it asked me for access to my pictures. It's like, no, why do you need to look at my pictures? You're cleaning my air. I don't know. So anyway, yeah, um, that's the specs on it. So uh, I got to reconfigure. I'm not even sure how I'm going to do this because this is kind of big, but um, I got to reconfigure some stuff and um, we'll put it up on the bench, I guess, and take a quick look into it and run it, run it through the ringer and see what we think. All right, I got the lighting and the camera set up as best I can for a big bulky item like this. Um, I do have this set up to my, I just plug it into my benchtop power supply, simulating automotive, running car, voltage. Uh, we got 14.4 uh, volts. We're looking at roughly 1.8 amps, 26 watts is what is what she's calling for there. Um, let's kind of give it a walk around as she's as she's doing her thing. Uh, we got battery compartment. This is where your two five amp hour batteries would go. You got one here and one here. Um, on the screen here, you got the actual volt. Sorry, the actual temperature inside the box, and then you have the voltage that's getting fed into it. They might be sampling this voltage on the way out because it seems like there's a little bit of voltage drop on it. But, um, yeah, I think it kicked in, so. This right here is your temperature adjustment. Can you see that? Yes, you can. I'm close enough. Um, it goes in one degree increments. When you turn it on, it's already set for minus four degrees, which is, I believe, uh, 20 degrees, minus 20 degrees Celsius. And you got your little lid here, little chain, there's a latch, and you got a little LED light that goes inside there. So, I just plugged into that so we kind of get an idea what the thing's going to suck off of your battery. Uh, two amps is definitely too much to leave it running off of your battery, your car battery, I should say, unattended for. I, w I wouldn't let it run for a half an hour like that. Depending on your battery, it's going to suck your battery dry. And I mean, let's be honest, we're here to do the DeWalt powered end of it. You plug the batteries in, like so. And put the other one in. And I dropped my tape measure. All right, so those two guys are sitting in there. And for it to change, I noticed from different power inputs, um, you actually, like I'm on battery uh, power right now, car battery power right now. It's reading the voltage, but it's not actually pulling the voltage out of it. Now, if you look, you ain't going to be able to see it, but on the end here, you got uh, right and left. And I'm pretty sure they're talking, looking at it from this angle, so right and left. If it were me, I would have made uh, front and back, but what are you going to do? So I'm going to disconnect it from the benchtop power supply and it should switch over to the DeWalt batteries. And I think when it does that, it actually shuts the compressor off and then it has to restart the compressor to get it going again. And I just heard the compressor restart. So what do you say we clear that from the uh, coffee maker. We just set ourselves a little timer here and put that in an orientation where it's not going to get glared out and just in case that timer doesn't work we'll look at the old clock here 3 30 p.m. and uh, yeah let's see how long it takes to get to what I would consider refrigerator temperatures. We're not necessarily looking to get it all the way down to minus four. All right, so we're roughly 22 and a half minutes in, and we're sitting at 15 degrees Fahrenheit, which is um, below freezing. Now, you got to keep in mind that we're not actually measuring the temperature of the air inside the unit. We're measuring the temperature of the wall. Um, if you didn't know, air is a really good insulator, so it's kind of hard to uh, figure figure all that out as far as 
as far as what's going in or going on there. So what I'm going to do is I got six water bottles out of the fridge so they are already down to temperature and uh, let's see if we can maintain the temperature of some uh, the load I guess we'll call it. It does feel physically cold in there. And I will point out uh, that 20 minutes it was running, we're at still 22.2 volts on the one battery and 19.4 volts on the other battery. I don't know for sure, but I think this kind of goes back and forth between the batteries as one drops and then it stops pulling from the other one and then it pulls from the, uh, from the opposite battery. But let's take a look just for a baseline. We are at 5 degrees Celsius, 32 degrees Fahrenheit for the water that we're sticking in. I put a black X on it so I can remember which one. And just so you can hear it, I'm going to grab the microphone and kind of stick it down here so you could, so you could uh, actually hear what the thing sounds like when it's running. has a little little mild hum to it so let's stick a thermal couple in there while it's running kind of not touching anything just sitting floating in the air good yeah that works all right and the air actually inside the unit is reading 37 degrees which is your refrigerator temperatures and what we'll do is set ourselves a timer here and again let me get my phone just in case the timer stops working we're at 357 so, um, yeah, let's run it run. I got some errands to run. I'm going to let it sit here and do its thing for at least an hour. And uh, we'll see if it can actually manage to uh, keep the contents of the uh, refrigerator here to temperature. Probably be a little longer than an hour. We'll see what happens. Well, we are at uh, coming on to roughly an hour and a half. It's 5.23 p.m. And um, I don't think we need this anymore. We got ourselves uh, 16 volts on the one battery, which is the right battery. And that battery I kind of suspected is going bad. So that is what it is. And the other battery, we're still chooching along at 20.2 uh, volts. Um, I will take a look. I got the app right here wanted to bring this up earlier you have three different levels of, of battery protection uh, last time I was playing with this I ran it at um, around these two down I just let it run until it died and it shuts off at 15 volts on both batteries so that that seems like a fairly safe way to go and you also have up here would be your uh, temperature control on the inside there you can get it to do its thing oh get it to it down here i'm an idiot and you can change the temperature that way and you now it just shows you that that i did do something there and uh yeah and pretty much all the rest of the controls like i said the, as far as control of the thing the the app's kind of nice to, to uh do all that with now as far as internal um temperatures go uh, this is reading 5 degrees Fahrenheit and the uh, thermocouple inside the uh, inside the unit there we're reading about 11 degrees I ran this at full throttle just to you know kind of get a better idea of what's going on here and I don't know if I mentioned it but you can actually hot swap these batteries if you want to 
think that's the one I just pulled out, which was the 15.5. And like I said, this is the one I'm suspecting is being bad. Actually, no, I pulled out the, the good one. Pop that back in. Yeah, this is the one I was suspecting is being bad. And as you can see, it's got a black X on it because I was thinking that it might have been a problem. We'll leave that out because I'm going to charge that anyway. And I just hit the camera. So let's get this out of the way. I'll open this guy up. There's a thermal coupler that was just floating around in there. And if I remember correctly, we started off with this bottle of water being. 30 degrees as far as this thermometer was reading and let's see if we drop the temperature any So yeah, I think we probably dropped it about 10 degrees, it's looking like. Maybe 8. So, yeah, it did some active cooling there. Alright, well, I mean, that's it for the thing running. So, let's clean up all this crap and close this video out. Alright, well, that was a, a mouthful of a video. It's still warm. I made this like 4 hours ago. I love these vacuum insulated cups but um yeah so um here we go that's my breakfast and lunch by uh, uh Melif is the uh, company name i still see milf but we're mill mill i don't know well anyway um coffee maker uh, it makes coffee uh, if you can get past the limitations of a uh, lithium ion 20 volt battery that just kind of makes it take a little bit longer um yeah i can't see how you'd go wrong with that i can say like i said earlier in the video that you know it's afternoon i've been in the cold all day and i could use a cup of coffee and i don't feel like driving to your regular places to get coffee let that thing run while i'm working get a nice uh get a nice stomach full of warm coffee to get me through the rest of the day i like it I, it Maybe it's just me. Um, the cooler. Uh, I will say, uh, it seems to work pretty good. The uh, limitations with this is just it's it's a refrigerator. You can't think of it like you would uh, like an ice cooler where you, you know, you go to the beer store, get your beer, get a five-pound bag of ice, drop the ice in the thing and fill it up, fill your, fill your beers in there, and an hour and a half later, your beers are cold. Um, like I said, air is a a really good insulator so it's kind of hard to transfer it so i think the way i would use this if i was going on like a road trip or fishing or some something like that uh in the morning when i would get up i'd plug it into the wall outlet get it down to temperature put products in it out of the refrigerator that are already cold transfer it out to my transfer it out to my truck plug it into the old cigarette lighter there let it run while i'm traveling when I get there, put the batteries in it, and then let it do its thing throughout the day, and uh, keep my keep my food items cold. It seems like that would be a pretty a pretty good uh, good way to use it. Uh, as far as I did forget to mention, uh, two point sorry two point five amps at twenty volts is what I said earlier. This is rated at uh, my maps telling me that ten amp hours worth of batteries is going to give you four hours running time. Uh, that is running constantly once this gets to target temperature the compressor is going to cycle on and off just to uh, keep keep it at target temperature so you could probably I mean I don't know I guess you probably be able to get maybe get eight hours out of it if you need it to I don't know if I want to really test it that long but um, yeah and I also forgot to mention the biggest batteries you can get in it is the six amp hour batteries so uh, keep that in mind so I mean two six amp hour batteries 12 amp hours you know do the math it's it's cooling for a decent amount of time so I mean not quite as much as a Yeti full of ice that'll last like seven weeks but for what it is it's pretty cool I mean you know you got power outages in your neighborhood you got a couple hundred dollars worth of meat in your fridge that you want to keep frozen 
I can't see why this wouldn't wouldn't help to do that. So um, yeah, uh, like I said before, this stuff was sent to me. No money's being changed. I will have affiliate links in the description. They are my Amazon associate affiliate links. If you buy this stuff, I get a little bit of money, very little bit of money. Amazon's cheap. But uh, if I'm sending you there, you might as, well, might as well send me a couple bucks. But um, yeah, so I kind of like it. Um, any questions or concerns or comments, leave them down in the thing. I'll try my best to answer them. Maybe we'll take another look at this. There was a lot of words that had to come out of my face and a lot of information. I probably should have did this in a two-part video, but I was trying to be cute and knock it out in one. And um, it, was a, it was a lot of work. It took a lot of time. So anyway, um, yeah. So I'd like to thank you for watching. Um, there you go.